بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم قل ان کان آبا اکم و ابنا اکم و اخوان اکم و ازواج اکم و اشیرت اکم و اموال انہیں طرف تموہا و تجارت تکشون کسادہا و مساکن تردونہا احب الیکم من اللہ و رسولہ و جہاد فی سبیلہ و تربسو حتى يأتي الله بأمره إن الله لا يحدي القوم الفاسقين صدق الله صدق الله العظيم My dear brothers and sisters I bring to you peace and salutations from the deepest south of Africa If you look at the map of the continent of Africa at the southmost point there is a country called South Africa In that country, there live some half a million of your brothers and sisters. On their behalf, I say to you, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, in this very militant age, when we are hearing about wars and the rumors of wars, about hijackings and kidnappings, about bombings. I have quoted to you one of the most militant verses of the Holy Quran. In this militant age, I have quoted you one of the most militant verses of the Holy Quran. It happens to be from Surah Tawbah. Surah Tawbah. Tawbah means repentance. It happens to be chapter 9 in the Holy Quran. This chapter is one of the most militant chapters in the Quran. What makes me to say that? What makes me to say that? Thank you. You see, this Surah Surah Tawbah is the only chapter in the Holy Quran which begins without a Bismillah. It's an amazing situation that every chapter in the Quran begins with the formula Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah most gracious most merciful. We start the Quran with Surah Fatiha we say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen Ar Rahmanir Rahim. We say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Qul A'uzu Bi Rabbil Nas Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Qul A'uzu Bi Rabbil Falak Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Tabbat Yada Abi Lahab Bi Mutab Every chapter of the Quran begins with this beautiful formula in the name of Allah most gracious most merciful Here is the chapter No Bismillah It's an amazing thing Beautiful salutation Beautiful introduction, but no Bismillah. Why is there no Bismillah in that surah? So learned men, our learned men, they tell us that this is Tawbah, repentance, it is a warning given to the mushiks of Makkah. They had entered into a treaty with the Muslims and unilaterally on their own, they broke the treaty. So Allah Ta'ala is giving them a warning. This is giving you three months in, put, in, in which to put things right. Otherwise, a declaration of war by Allah and His Messenger. War. By the time he reaches verse 3, he says, وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِأَزَابٍ alim," And give glad tidings, give the good news to the kafir of azabin alim, of a grievous penalty. When Allah Bari Ta'ala talks like that, we can see that Bismillah is uncalled for. Similarly as we would do. You know, while we are walking, let's say our wife or daughter is walking ahead of us and somebody snatches a handbag. And you run and you grab her, you grab the, the thief. What do you tell him? What would you tell him? He says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Is that what you tell him? 
I'm a very nice, kind-hearted old man, but if you don't return that handbag, I'll break your neck for you. Is that how you talk? No. If it calls for breaking a guy's neck or arm, you say, hey, give that back, or I'll break your neck for you. Am I right? There's no assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's uncalled for. Allah barit ala, that's the same. A declaration of war. Warning. Ultimatum. When Allah gives the ultimatum, it goes straight into the subject, it says, look, put things right, or go. It's a very militant suit. Most militant in the Holy Quran. But by the time Allah Bari Ta'ala, in his revelation, he reaches verse 24. He now devotes his attention to us. Us. First was it was the mushriks. Now it's our turn. It's our turn. He's now focusing his attention on us. He says, Qul, tell them, you, tell these Muslims. Allah is telling them, tell them now. That was for the kafirs. Now says, tell these fellows here. Those people who say that they believe in you, believe in Allah and His message, in His revelation. Tell them, in kana ba'ukum, whether it be your fathers, wa'abna'ukum, or your sons, wa'ikhwanukum, or your brothers, wa'azwajukum, or your wives, wa'ashiratukum, or your relations. Or the wealth that you have amassed. Or the losses you fear in your businesses. And, it, and the dwellings in which you take so much delight. If you love any one of these things more than you love Allah, wa Rasulihi and His Rasul, wa jihadin fi sabilihi, and doing jihad in Allah's way, is a fatarabbasu. He said, you wait. فَتَرَبَّسُوا You wait. حَتَّى يَأْتِي اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِ Until Allah's decision comes about. For what? For your destruction. حَتَّى يَأْتِي اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَحْذِي الْقَوْمِ الْفَاسِكِينَ For Allah will not guide a rebellious people, perverted transgressors. He's talking about us. He's not talking about the mushriks. He's not talking about the Jews. He's not talking about the Nasara. He's talking about us. You, he said, you perverted transgressors, you rebellious people. Allah will not guide you. He will not help you. He says, Fatarabbas, you wait. An amazing situation. The Muslims, they waited. We Muslims. We must misunderstood the message. Allah says, wait, and we waited. For what? 800 years. Allah Ta'ala gave us rule, dominion, power in Spain. In Spain, the Muslims ruled Spain for 800 years. They created a garden, beautiful con country. They enjoyed the fruits of this life. But they didn't do the job. They didn't do the job. They didn't propagate the faith. So after 800 years of Muslim rule, they were wiped out to a man. There was not one man left in that country to give the azan. Do you know that? After 800 years, can you imagine the situation that you live and rule a nation for 800 years and you are wiped out to a man, not one man to give the azan? Why? Because you live to the job. Allah says, Fatarabbasu, you wait and they waited. Waited for destruction. These Arabs, these were our brothers. Who lives in this place? They were our brothers. And they were reading the Quran. They were reading the Holy Quran. And they understood the Quran. Unlike the non-Arabs. 90% of the Muslims of the world are non-Arabs. We read the Quran like a parrot. That's how we were trained to read. Like a parrot. We read it for sawab, for blessings. And inshallah, Allah will give us sawab. He will reward us. Maybe he will give us double reward. But unfortunate part is that we don't know what we are reading. We are not getting instructions. These Arabs, they read the Quran in their own mother tongue. They understood what Allah was telling them. And yet they didn't heed the warning. They read in the Quran. Kam taraku min jannati wa uyun. He said, how many were the gardens and the fountains they left behind? Wa zuwim wa makam in kareem. And cornfields and monumental buildings. Wa ni'matin kanu fiha faqihin. And wealth and the amenities of life in which they took so much delight. What is it? Come. He said, that's other people we made to inherit these things. 
فما بقت عليهم السماء والارض وما كانوا منزرين neither the heavens nor the earth shed a tear for them nor was respite given to them anymore this is the warning allah gives 